In this video, uh, we'll learn a new topic. It's called uh, stochastic calculus. And uh, um, as you guys can see, the notebook title it's uh, called uh, uh, Ito uh, calculus as well, uh, because we'll learn a famous formula um, named after a Japanese mathematician. But let's first um, see the question we're going to ask. Uh, that is, uh, we'll learn how do we rationalize this integral. So this d is our euro differential operator, and of course w of t is our standard Brownian motion, for t is greater than or equal to zero, and our f of sorry, this should be uh, f of s. And our f of t is uh, um, it's just a deterministic function. Okay. In textbook, uh, the way the textbook argues or uh, go through this topic is quite uh, is quite vague. It's it's using integration by parts, but actually uh, summation by parts, and without uh, rationalize. The summation first, but so let's uh, um, let's review from calculus and let's try from uh, what happens in calculus, and we try to generalize, make an analogy of uh, what's happening in calculus, um, and we make an analogy to the stochastic calculus. So let's uh, let's uh, look at this integral instead from 0 to t f of s, but here is we integrate some g of s, okay? And first of all, this d of g of s is uh, something like, uh, if we consider, uh, define this integral in the Riemann way, so in Riemann sum, This one is approximated by uh, delta g of s, which is something like uh, um, g of s plus uh, delta s minus g of s. Okay, and if g is differentiable, this can be uh, approximated by uh, g prime. Evaluate s when delta s is small. Okay, multiply with delta s. So, um, in other words, or say uh, we can even think about this formula. That is, uh, uh, this one we insert. Okay, delta s as the uh, denominator and then we multiply this delta s and as we can see we can let delta s go to zero then the left is nothing but g prime of s times delta s okay and which says when g is differentiable this is nothing but uh, f of s g prime of s ds so delta s becomes ds when we uh, make it in a continuum. Okay. However, okay, if we try to follow the same if we try to follow the same for Brownian motion, we'll encounter uh, some problems. For example, we try to replicate this G, which is a deterministic function and we try to replace this uh, uh, as Brownian motion. Let's see what happens. So let's try to uh, do the same for Brownian motion. And we compute something like uh, W of t plus delta t, delta t really small, subtract W of t, then divided by delta t. Okay. First of all, by uh, stationary increment, we know that W of t plus delta t uh, subtract uh, w of t is a normal, 
distribute a random variable with mean zero and variance delta t. Okay. And now we divide this delta t. This is first of all, it doesn't change its mean, so it's still zero. But for the variance, we have to multiply with this guy square and multiply with delta t. As a result, uh, it has a normal distri It's a normally distributed random variable with mean zero and variance one over delta t. And this term is extremely bad because uh, as delta t goes to zero, this guy goes to infinity, and this is some infinite variance. And as we can see. Um, if we take the limit, so first of all, in the deterministic calculus, we take the limit of this term and be, it becomes this when we take like the limit of the Riemann sum. But however, um, in uh, stochastic calculus, when we compute this, okay, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense to write something like w prime of s ds because w of t is not differentiable okay by uh, this argument now how do we do it we still do um, the euro way the riemann sum okay the way we compute this integral is still through defining a Riemann sum just like a deterministic calculus. Um, how we do it is we simply we rewrite this integral, we define actually this integral by its Riemann sum, which is uh, from 0 to t. So we have from 0 to t, and we divide um, 0 to t into. Uh, like n small intervals with each one uh, of length t divided by n. So for example, the first uh, time would be uh, t divided by n, and this is 2t divided by n, and up to uh, this is uh, capital N minus 1 divided by n times t. Okay, and the last one is nt divided by n, which is t. So as a result, um, our Riemann sum can be written as we let this number of intervals go to infinity and we sum up the Riemann sum, the partial Riemann sum on these uh, n intervals and we replace uh, this d of ws by uh, delta of uh, ws. So it is uh, we sum up f of kt divided by n, which are um, the value of f on these uh, um, the left endpoint of uh, each interval, and we multiply the delta of w on each interval, which is uh, w evaluated at a k uh, plus one t divided by n subtract w of uh, uh, kt divided by n, okay? And now let's try to analyze um, this sum. First of all, let's still keep uh, the partial, only keep the partial one, okay? So the partial sum s sub n, which is defined um, without the limit, uh, which is defined without this limit. Basically, uh, we have Sn is this part, all right? And now let's look at uh, um, this term right here. By um, stationary independent increment, this one is a random variable, which is um, mean zero and uh, 
the time length is t divided by n, so the variance is uh, t divided by capital N. As a result, our partial sum is can be written as um, the sum of actually f values, for example, f as zero times uh, z of zero. Okay, so this z of zero is uh, of uh, is normally distributed with mean zero and variance plus f evaluated at uh, the second point times z1 and z1 is um, has the same distribution with z0 but they are independent because of the independent increment assumption and uh, we plus up to let's say uh, m minus 1 t divided by n and lastly, we have this uh, uh, z sub m minus 1. And as we can see, um, z0 till n uh, sub minus 1, and they are uh, iid and normally distributed random variable. And they sum, so if we, uh, these f are like uh, coefficients. So if we sum them up, it's still a normal normally distributed random variable and uh, what happens is we only need to figure out the mean and the variance so uh, apparently uh, the mean is uh, zero okay uh, because all of them uh, have uh, mean zero and for the variance okay and uh, we can simply compute it as follows because they are coefficient okay so we have the variance is this f square and this variance of uh, z0 plus f t divided by n square variance of z1 and we plus till uh, f square m minus 1 divided by n t square and times a variance of uh, z m minus 1 and keep this in mind uh, all of them um, share the same variance which is uh, t divided by n and so as a result we have this is a uh, t divided by n sum of uh, uh, k from 0 to m minus 1 f uh, square kt divided by n. And if uh, we recognize the sum as a deterministic Riemann sum, and we can uh, see that this is a partial Riemann sum um, for for uh, for the integral from zero to t f square of s uh, ds, okay, and uh, which means when we take the limit of n here, um, when we take n go to infinity, uh, this one will converge uh, to uh, f square of s ds.